Hey, good morning, Emmanuel. Welcome to church today. Caleb, welcome to church today. <laughs> uh, we are so glad that you are here this morning. Uh, it's going to be a great day. Today's a very special day. I feel like I've said that for our last couple Sundays. Mm -hmm. But, guys, my favorite person in the world is preaching today. Jung Mo's preaching today. So exciting. So, like, now's the time to send this link to everybody you know to get on your phone because... When Jung Mo brings a word, it's it's just it's just different. You do not want to miss that. It hits different, as the kids would say. So Jung Mo, <laughs> we are so excited to hear from you today. But we have a bunch of announcements that we want you to know about. Katie, the first one, arguably the most important one. Arguably the most important. It is that we want you to sign in this morning. We yes. care that you're here, whether you're here in person with us or you're here in the online world with us. Please sign in. We want to just know that you're here. Yeah. You Absolutely. can do that either on the app or on our website, and you can find the app at the Apple Store or at the Google Play Store. And the Church Center app. The That's church what it's center called. App. Church yes. Center app. Once you download it, you pick your church. Super easy. So easy. Last time we were doing this together, I think you did it Actually, for the people I could, live. I could, we could do I that could do again. It, I could do it again. It's super oh, quick. That's not, I need to re. I need to re. Nope, still not through. I need to reorganize my apps. Oh. I'm, I'm a mess. If you're the kind of person that has very organized apps and home screens, we want to know in the chat. Yes. Or if your apps are just all jumbled all over the place, we also want to know that in the chat. I, I just I just checked in and I clicked three apps and three wrong apps in the process. <laughs> so that added like 15 seconds on. Once you have the church and the app downloaded, super easy. Mm -hmm. It's just like boop, 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 done. So do that right now. Pretty please. Right now. Just for us be great. It would help us out a lot. What else we got? Oh, it's a special day for another reason. Absolutely. This, we this, are so excited about this one. This next announcement is in all caps. <laughs> on our saying. paper. All caps on our paper. Um, great news for parents with young children. The nursery will open on Sunday starting to today, today for the 9 a.m. service only. So 9 a.m. only, not 1045. No. And we are so excited to be offering this to whole families and so that parents can come and enjoy the service, drop their kids off, knowing full and well that they are taken care of, that they're having fun, so that parents can be completely immersed in worship and just having a moment to themselves. Yeah, Every absolutely. parent deserves that. You absolutely. deserve that. You do. So 9 a.m., if you have a youngin and you say, I <laughs> want to come to church and I want to bring them with us. 9 a.m. service is your service. 9 a.m. is for you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Hey, something else that could be for you for you, we have started something called Alpha. So this is for, for people who are new to faith, maybe who just have questions about faith. Some of us have, you know, had our faith for a while, but there's right. some basic questions that like we're afraid to ask. Right. Or, like I should have like learned this in like the first semester of my Christian faith and now but you I'm didn't, too scared to ask. You're too far gone. But this 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 Alpha course is welcome for anybody and everybody. It started last week, but you can still join in. I know mm -hmm. Anne would love to have as many people as possible. I believe the number she said last week we had. 26. Wow. That's awesome. That is so awesome. It is an 11 week series of interactive sessions that freely explore the basics of Christian faith. No pressure, no homework, no charge. That's, that's my kind of class. That's right. And it includes dinner. Oh. Guys. Food. I'm there. What, what are you doing? If you're not a part of this course, it's on Monday nights at 6.30, starts in the cafe, they eat dinner together, it's great. Mm -hmm. I got to be there like right before they started and, and last week the food they brought in was... What was it? So they had this, this tomato pie. If you're a fan of tomato pie, we need to talk. If you're not a fan, we need to talk even more because tomato pie is one of my favorite foods in the world and they had a huge pie last week and they're always gonna, you, you know how Ann Hansen rolls, like if oh. she's running something, Good food is included, guaranteed. It is a guarantee. So Alpha Course, talk to Ann if you're still interested. And remember, it's Mondays at 6.30. All right. Big announcements all over the week, oh. all over the place. Next week, FCA Camp is officially here. It starts on Monday. If you have registered, we want to see you here. Monday morning, 8.30 a.m., we are so excited. It's been a while since we've done FCA camp. For those of you who don't know, FCA stands for Fellowship of Christian Athletes. It's a worldwide organization mm -hmm. that really um, wants to bring the gospel through the way of sports. Through right. sports, brings the gospel. They're in schools. It's an organization that does camps. Like they're right. doing. There's so many different ways that FCA brings the gospel. And 
this next week, they're, they're coming to help with us, and we're going to run a sports camp together with them. It's great. If you have a kid between kindergarten and sixth grade, you can still register them. You can still register them. You can go to lansdale.church slash kids and register them like, like right now. Right now. Like right now. If you're a volunteer for FCA camp, remember, we have a training meeting tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Food will be included there as well. So mm -hmm. you have to show up to that. Make sure you show up to that. Um, and also, we have a couple more things that we need from you for this week. There are still a few slots left to sign up to donate meals for our FCA volunteers and snacks for our campers. These meals keep FCA camp affordable. They help out our leaders. We have a lot of great leaders helping out this week. So there's a link on the kids page to sign up for that if you're interested in helping out there. And another way that you can help is there's still a couple days that we need a nurse to come right. in and help us out during the week. So if you're a nurse, if you know a nurse, if you know somebody who can help us out in that way, just let me know. We would love to fill in all those days with an official nurse on campus. So if you know somebody, if you are somebody, come talk to me, email me, text me, call me, pager me, whatever. Get a hold of me. Let me know. Even if you have just a few hours to give and you know that you are a nurse or you know a nurse, that is a big need. That it we is. Are it would help us out a ton. But happy. FCA camp next week. Oh, I'm so excited. You're just going to feel the energy in this building if yes. you show up at all next week. or As you pray for it, as, as we prepare for it, it's going to be a great week. I'm excited. God's going to do some pretty great things. What, what's another camp that they can look forward to? Oh, man. So we have something called Kid Venture Camp. Kid Venture Camp is a three-day morning camp for preschoolers. Join us, join, join us in the morning for fun music, awesome games, Bible adventures, crafts, and snacks. And this camp is for three to five-year-olds. So if you have a three-year-old, a four-year-old, or a five-year-old, then this might be for them. But please make sure they are potty trained. That is a big, important. important one. So I can't go. <laughs> From Tuesday to Thursday, August 3rd to the 5th, 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And I'll say those dates one more time just so that those parents that are like, what, I missed that. <laughs> can write that down. This is for you. August 3rd through the 5th from 9 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. Join Perfect. us with your three to five-year-olds. Awesome. And I believe the theme of the week is your adventure with Jesus awaits. Ooh. Love that. That's Endless awesome. Endless possibilities That's awesome. That. Who knows Literally. what excitement awaits you there. That's so great. Hey, we are about to transition into service now, but I want to take a time and just pray for us, pray for this day. Um, like we say every week, if you're interested in tithing or giving an offering, there's multiple opportunities to do that. If you're in person, we have receptacles in the back. If you want to give online, you can go through the app, you can go through our website and just go to the giving tab and you can give right there. But I would just love to pray for us and our time together. So let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the opportunity that we have every week just to gather together in your name and to hear your word and to sing your praises, God. And, and your mercies, they're new every day. And so we get to celebrate them new every day, God, with a new heart, with, with just a new soul that awaits to hear from you again and again, God. I pray that we would approach this service with a childlike wonder, that we would seek you in a new way today, that, that we would await to hear what you're going to speak through Jung Mo, that we would just be so anxious to get into worship, to be able to lift up your name and praise God. I just pray that everything would be new today in our hearts, that, that we would seek you in new ways and hear you in new ways and that you would move. God, we know that you can move. We know you have moved in this place before. We know you will do it again, and we are looking forward to exactly that this morning. God, we love you. We thank you. You are so, so good, and we just want to praise your name this morning. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's throw it to, to worship. service. So you guys know we're going to start things a little slow today, but that doesn't mean that you can't give your all to God. So, so we're going to start with some slow songs, like I just said, but you know, just be in the moment, allow the spirit to move and, and the whole, the whole entirety of, of the set that we've prepared this morning, the, the worship songs that we've selected intentionally are just so oriented around the Holy Spirit and allowing it to move and, and asking it to come in power. So 
We're going to pray real quick and then we're, we're just going to worship. God, we thank you for all the things that you're doing in our lives, the things that we don't always see, we don't always openly acknowledge. We just thank you. God, we know that you have so much more in store for us. So as we come today with open hearts, God, we ask you to, to just touch us in ways that are so tangible. Allow us to receive your spirit and, and just see
Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of the Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Emmanuel, this song that we're about to sing is called Prepare the Way. And it almost feels weird to pause and talk about it because it's just a continuation of the two songs that we've been singing about. Um, it's all about the Holy Spirit, but, but more importantly, it's about when we first encountered the Holy Spirit, when the church first encountered the Holy Spirit, and it just became that, that landmark, the, the tangible entity that guides us in our, in our walk. And so this is a declaration of the importance of that moment and, and the importance of calling on the Holy Spirit and, and allowing him to guide us. And the same Holy Spirit that, that met with the disciples that night is here this morning. So the bridge of this song goes, fire fall, wind come blow, we're ready for more. Break down the walls and push back the doors, we're ready for more. So pray with me. Father God, we just want to be so open to what you have for us in this moment. God, we ask that you would fall like fire and that your spirit would come blow through the room. God, we want to experience your power. God, any walls that we've built up that are preventing you from moving in us and through us, God, we, we ask you to break them down. We ask that you, you just turn them into rubble, God, because you are a God who is way more powerful than, than the walls that we can build up. God, if there's any areas of our life that we have hidden behind doors, we ask that you push back through them, that you burst through those doors, God, that you enter into every part of our life because we don't want to follow you in just one aspect of our life. We want to follow you in every area. And so God, we pray all of these things with this song and we just ask that whatever you have for us, whatever your will is, that it be done. the re- 
of ancient and old time glory. Spirit of God, come do it again. Hey, we're just getting started. The Spirit is not done if you feel that. Let's pray. Father, you listen our cry out. We are hunger for Holy Spirit, Father. Every Sunday is coming. Every same people. Every same worship term. We're going to talk about Bible, which is the same Bible. Once Holy Spirit come, you're going to do something that we never imagined before. Father, we open our heart. Speak to us. This is your place. We give our throne to you. We 
give all glory to you. That's what we are here for. Come, speak to us. Reveal yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When the day of Pentecost came, the Holy Spirit breathed life into the early church. The number of believers greatly added in Jerusalem day by day and now began to spread into other places like Judea, Samaria, and Asia and Europe. Every day, those who were being saved increased, increased rapidly regardless of their, their age, gender, or where they were come from. New people were filling the church. Think about it. Wouldn't you be so excited if you were one of the church leaders or congregation? However, that doesn't mean that the early churches were always rejoicing and celebrating each other. In fact, during the early church's growth, the churches had to deal with some tough and difficult issues in and out of the church. Unexpected, challenging situations continued to arise. For example, there was a great conflict occurred between Jewish Christian and Gentile Christian. Although the Gentiles also received the Holy Spirit, most of the Jewish Christian were against the idea of converting Gentiles into Christian because they thought no one could become followers of Jesus Christ without following the Mosaic law or being circumcised. Although they respect the apostle Peter, they publicly criticized Peter for eating and socializing with Gentiles. Not only had that, but the tension between the two groups grown worse because of different cultures, languages, food, and lifestyle. Eventually, a great division began to arise among the supporters of the Gentile and the anti-Gentile. Externally, a great persecution also arose against the early church. Herod Agrippa, the governor of Judean territory at the time, publicly supported Jewish religious leaders. To, to gain favor with them, Herod started a major attack against the Jesus movement. It appears that Agrippa's first profile victim was James, the son of Zebedee. You know, James was one of the 12 disciples with his brother John, the author of the Gospel John, and he was also a very close friend of Peter. After Herod saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter too. So at this background, Simon Peter, one of the most well-known apostles, was in prison, and we are going to read through his story soon. Now, we're going to talk about little Peters. Peter has been wrongly cooped up in prison with a made-up reason by Herod. Peter must have felt uncomfortable in his cell because of humidity and heat of imprisonment and a chain on both his hands. He isn't able to do anything, but he may think all memories with James, his dear friend and co-worker, whom uh, he have, um, whom he have known even before following Jesus. Probably Peter emotionally overwhelmed with remembering all this moment 
they have, finish fishing, fishing uh, the fish together while being fisher of men together and then walking with Jesus along the way. How thrilling it was. It seems like impossible for Peter to accept the fact that James, his loved one, was murdered. He may wonder if there is anything he could have done to keep him from dying. Then guilt floods in. The more Peter remembers him, remembers him the more he feels uncontrollable, uncontrollable pain inside. Now, Peter think of the church he loves. The church has been experiencing indescribable miracles. A great number of people converted to Christianity. But now, church, the light of the sword of the word, are being persecuted. Church leaders are either killed or fleeing. And worse, the church is suffering from internal division. In today's passage, Peter is now waiting for his turn for his death as Herod's public trial is approaching. If I were him, I may be in despair, hopeless, full of regret and hopelessness. You think? Today, I want us to find out how Peter gets out this desperate situation and praise the Lord and apply the secret to life, to our life as well. Let me read today's scripture, book of Acts chapter 12, verse 6 to 11. The scripture in, in the slide. Let me read. The very night before Herod was going to bring Peter out, who Peter bound with two chains, was sleeping between two soldiers with a while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He tapped at Peter on, on the side and woke him up and saying, Get up quickly and the chains fell off his wrist. The angel said to him, fasten your belt and put on your sandal. He did so. Then he said to him, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter went out and followed him, and he did not realize that what was happening with the angel's help was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. After they opened up for them, for after they had passed the first and the second guard, they came before the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord. And they went outside and walked along a lane when suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I'm sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hands of the headwork and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. What would you do if you were in Peter's situation in prison? What thoughts or maybe emotions would you have if you were Peter? Think about it. If you were Peter, would you become more stressful or have a narrow sight with these hard circumstances in front of you? Or would you focus on witnessing God's wonderful work that a large number turn to believe to the Lord every day? Emmanuel, how are you doing these days? What voice are echoing in your heart? Is your soul well? Have you felt as if you are in any chain binding you and your life? Do you feel like you can't get out of those chains although you do want to? Peter in prison might be tempted to take Satan's lie. Peter, 
You two will soon be killed by Herod. There's nothing you can do. And the church will be scattered and destroyed. Are these two different voices existing and coexisting in your heart, the truth or lies? If any darkness is trying to crawl inside you, if so, I firmly believe that you will be reminded God's plan to rescue you through today's message. Let's begin to completely come out of any swamp of a despair and pain. Let us attentively take a look at two particular actions we can learn from Peter. You ready? In verse 7, an angel of God appeared to Peter, who was sleeping in despair. The angel quietly woke him up and said something to him. What was it? Get up quickly. In Bible, anistemi, get up, has several meanings. It means to stand upright by the truth, supported by the roots like a tree or other plants. Nothing, not standing on our own, but stand by, by the power that the Lord gives us. So another meaning is to be on its foundation, which means to stand in the truth. We have a tendency, tendency to give our trust only when things work the way we want them to, and only when we can control things the way we think they should be. But instead of feeling any security from visible phenomena, knowing there is nothing you can do when something happens. So when you are in despair, would you still stand tall in the truth? Would you put your faith in the truth, Jesus Christ? Today's scripture, the angel also told Peter, fasten your belt and put on your sandals, verse 8. As soon as I see the words belt and sandal, if you went to the Sunday school correctly, and it reminds you of put on every piece of God's armor written in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. What do the belt and sandal symbolize? Belt stands for truth. And sandal is gospel. Through gospel, we rise. The gospel is the best gift God freely gives us. And his one and only son shed his innocent blood for the price. So Peter got up with the belt of truth and the sandal of the gospel so that he came out, came out of the dungeon where it made him frightened and whispered a lie and dreaded him in despair. You too, Emmanuel, get up quickly. Let's stand in truth for Jesus Christ and run out of the prison with sandal of the gospel. In John chapter 5, Jesus used the same word get up to a paralytic at Bethesda. In Jerusalem, in Jerusalem there was the pool of a Bethesda where disciple John tells us a great number of the disabled people, the blind, lame, the paralyzed, used to lie down there. Legend had it that the angel would come down into the pool and stir up the water, and the first person into the pool after the stirring of the water was made well from whatever disease he was afflicted. There Jesus met a man who had been paralyzed for 38 years. Let me talk further after watching a short video clip that I, that I prepared. Shalom. Me? Yes. Shalom. I have a question for you. 
for me. I don't have many answers, but I'm listening. Do you want to be healed? Who are you? We'll get to that later. But my question remains. Will you take me to the water? <laughs> Look, I'm having a really bad day. You've been having a bad day for a long time. So? Sir, I have no one to help me into the water when it's stirred up. And when I do get close, the others step down in front of me. And so... Look at me. Look at me. That's not what I asked. I'm not asking you about who's helping you or who's not helping or who's getting in your way. I'm asking about you. <laughs> I've tried. For a long time, I know. And you don't want false hope again, I understand. But this pool, it has nothing for you. It means nothing. And you know it. But you're still here. Why? I don't know. Need this pool. You only need me. So, do you want to be healed? So let's go. Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Get up means we do not put our hope on that pool. The pool means, pool it means nothing. Neither makes an excuse that no one carry us there, not anymore. Get up means that we only need Jesus, nothing else. Only in Jesus, through Jesus, we can get up. We can renew our strength as an angel fly up with its full strength. John 16, 31, Jesus asked the disciple, do you finally believe? And Jesus said, here on, earth, here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrow as Peter is experiencing. But Jesus said, but take heart because I have overcome the word. Emmanuel, let's get up with Jesus. Stand up toe on the cornerstone named Jesus because he has overcome the word. Amen? And what, what should we do next when we get up? 
we leave the prison entirely. That's our second point of today. Live entirely and give all glory to God. Get out of jail completely. Be free from the influence of the prison. To be free first, Peter and we must follow the path shown by the angel. Verse 8, that the angel said, follow me, and he did it. Peter did not escape the prison on his, in his own on terms. Follow the path that shown by the angel. According to verse 10, Peter had to pass two, post, two posts. Depending on how deep the influence of each person it is in your life, some people may only need to get out of the prison by passing the first post, while others might have to go through three or four or five or more posts. Second, don't be cut off the guards just because you've passed one postcard, one guard post. Don't celebrate too early. You may see how many athletes have fallen victim by celebrating, celebrating too early. Every time you pass through each post, you must rely on the Lord in humble attitude, following the word of God, and being led by the Holy Spirit until the end. Otherwise, if we rely on our experience or tactic, how we passed before, becoming prideful, or celebrating only, we may find ourselves going backward and eventually going back to the prison again. Third, no matter how many guards post you may go through, as long as you are in prison, you cannot see a big picture of the Lord. Verse 9 said, all the time he thought it, it was a vision. Peter didn't realize it was actually happening. In prison, Peter couldn't tell if it was a real or dream, which means he was still spiritually, emotionally, and physically unstable. Peter's perspective was yet broadened while he was still in prison. But listen, verse 10. They went outside when suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I am sure. The Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of the herald. Only after we are living the prison entirely, we know that we came out of the darkness. We can finally accept the truth that the Lord sent the angel and rescued us. When you are still in prison, you focus only on the angel you see in front, of, in front of you, not realizing that the angels are there because God has sent them. But only when you are completely freed from that prison, you know the whole picture that all this was done by the precise hand of God who is faithful, holy, and who, is, who loves us so much. Let me talk about the angel a little bit. The angel can be a generous helping when you are in trouble. It could be a great person you, are, you really admire, a friend and a coworker, a pastor or a church member or some miracles. Please do not misunderstand that you shouldn't express your gratitude to them. However, if we pay too much to the special story of angel, you might narrow down your view of what the Lord is doing. If you focus too much on angel, it is very hard for you to go to the next step, which is the last step to get out of the prison. Now, this is the last step. How then do we know we are completely freed from the influence of the prison and departed with the help of the angel. Here's the answer. By giving all glory, I mean 100% glory to the Lord, 
we can prove that we are completely out of the despair. When we realize that God set you free from prison, we give thanks and praise only to the Lord. As soon as Peter got out of the prison, he did not go home to take a shower, nor his favorite restaurant, but he went straight to the church to share what happened. And his personal praises multiply the thanks and the praises of all believers who heard what God has done. Yes, our despair ends with the giving and praising to the highest awesome God in all its glory. One day I had an opportunity to prepare a sermon. So I humbly prayed, Lord, tell me what you want to say through me. I will humbly listen to your voice and proclaim your word. And I want all this preparation and sermons for your glory. That's how I pray. And the, the, the Lord seems to answer to me, Jongmo, I know you are praying with your very humble heart right now. But after sermon, why don't you give all glory to me? Last time, you gave me most, but you kept some for your effort. He showed me that I was different before preparing for the sermon and after finishing the sermon. Don't follow me. Let us give 100% glory to the Lord for everything that he has done. If so, no pride would sprout. Peter hadn't tried to increase his power in the church by using this magical story for getting out of the prison with a help of angel. He gave all the glory to the Lord. He gave all the glory to the Lord. Let me close today's sermon. You know, every Tuesday at 9 o'clock in the morning, our pastoral staff gathered together to meditate scripture and pray for church members. A few weeks ago, Pastor Mark asked us to write down 10 reasons why you are thankful. And then one, one reason, uh, one, one thing makes us worry. Don't you think the other way around would be much easier to write down 10 worries and one thanks. It took long than I thought. Then I made it. Let me share. First, dishwasher and laundry machine. <laughs> well, I have three kids, you understand. Second, my daughter said I was able to go to Nevada with, my, uh, with her nana this summer. Three, it is my joy to see my three kids, Saya, Ian, and Mina, are growing wonderfully. Four, my wife Yoon loved me. I love her, and she is thriving. And five, I don't have any financial debt. And the house where God allows our family to live through the angel's generosity. Six, Emmanuel, you. and all Emmanuel staff, I'm thankful for all of you and serving awesome God together. You makes me better. Seven, Asian American ministry and six people in the leadership and potential ministry in the future. Eight, I will have a summer vacation in August. I cannot wait. <laughs> Nine, so many good friends I have around me. You know, when Yoon and I came to the state in 2009, we didn't have kids at the time. We have no family, zero friends. But I, now I have so many friends, either Christian or non-Christian, whom I trust. Ten. Jesus, it's you. You are my center of my life. Without you, number one to nine, it's just nothing. 
Emmanuel, how often do we mess out? So many reasons to be thankful to God. So as you apply today's message, I ask you to take the, car, take the time to write 10 reasons why you are thankful. And as Peter shared to his church, I would like to ask you to share your thankfulness to your family together. Let me give you homework until next week, next Sunday. When worship team leads the closing song, the song that we sang before, beautiful song, the Holy Spirit, you should come to pick it up. All of you who are interested in doing this fun, fun homework, come to the altar to pick it up. If you are online, you can find a digital version on our website. Find the page, Grateful Card. It will be excellent topic for dinner time with your family, don't you think? Aren't you excited? Oh, Jungkook gave me homework. Can you promise to do to give all glory and praise to our God. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for inviting us to see your blessing in disguise and that Apostle Peter experienced. It may appear like a trial, but now we do know you use these difficult circumstances to redirect Peter and us to something far greater than we could ever hope or dream. God, you are so faithful and merciful. Even though the fig tree have no blossom and have no grave on the vine, even though the flock dies in the field and cattle barns are empty, yet we will rejoice in you, O Lord. We will be joyful in Jesus. So help us get up, stand up toward on the cornerstone, Jesus, our truth and Savior, in Jesus' name.
Thanks for worshiping with us. Can't wait to do it again next week. <laughs>